Good morning, everybody. So today we're hiking up Garibaldi, and I want to talk about why you should be making HDRs if you like photography. You might be asking yourself now, what is HDR? So HDR stands for high dynamic range, and the range is very different on every single camera you buy. So the best cameras usually have better dynamic range. Uh, so by range, I mean the brightest uh, point in a picture before it becomes overexposed, and also the lowest point where it's underexposed. So these two points form the dynamic range of a camera. HDR is a technique that allows to extend the range of photos by usually taking three different shots at three different exposures. So some good use case for HDR is like right now underneath the trees because the sky is really overexposed and the trees tend to be underexposed. So it's really hard taking a shot that is just right. We just got to the lake and the view is simply amazing. Look at this. Now let's talk how to capture an HDR shot. So you probably need a more professional camera like this one. Uh, if you're only taking pictures with your cell phone, your cell phone is probably already doing HDR for you. So for example, the Pixel phone takes 10 pictures and the iPhone does a similar technique to get better shots with different exposures. So if you open your menu here, you should have your exposure settings here where you can change the exposure compensation. So if you turn this dial, it's going to move it around. It might be a little different depending on your camera, but both my cameras are going to have, are going to have this setting. But now if you go on the dial right on top, that's how it works for my camera. So if you come here and you turn around this dial, you're going to see that now we have three different exposures here. So usually I'm going to go around uh, minus two and plus two. So that means it's going to take one shot at a normal setting, one shot with minus two exposure and one shot with the plus one exposure. So you probably also want to enable your burst mode. So this is going to allow to take three shots really quickly. And by taking these shots really quickly, you're gonna avoid having things that change between every single shot, which is gonna make it easier afterwards when you need to merge the shots together. So here I'm gonna try and take a picture uh, of the rocks in front and the mountain in the back. And you can actually see that the white of the snow really reflects a lot of light, but that the trees right beside don't reflect as much. So here, HDR is really gonna help bring up the light back from uh, the trees and also uh, keep detail inside of the snow. So you probably heard the free, very rapid uh, shutter burst. So this is actually what's taking the picture. So it took three pictures. If you look at them, there's one that's underexposed, uh, there's one that's overexposed, and there's one that's rightly exposed right now. It's ice cold. Wait, I think I'm gonna come. Wow. wow. You made me want to try it too. You can go in here and it's like a cold um, punch. Cold punch. It's not that oh, sure. bad, actually. Yeah, no, it is bad. <laughs> I 
I hope the quality is not too bad. Uh, my Osmo Pocket died and I have a battery pack, but I forgot the cable. So now I'm using my cell phone. So we go around this mountain here, right? And then climb up, we get to see the lake over on that side. There are people on top of that mountain there. Yeah, I know. You know we're going there. Just getting better. What the f <laughs> Oh my god. This is crazy. So we're actually heading right to the top here. I'm getting so exhausted right now, but I'm almost to the top. Finally got to the top. The view is just amazing. Wow. But so tired. Also super hungry. We still didn't have lunch. So wow. Trevor. Oh. How oh, good is God. this? Oh my god. Amazing. When you get to the top of the mountain and there's LT. Trevor. <laughs> it's crazy, we're just sliding down. Woo! But way more easier than going up. That hike was really exhausting. Um, when we got to the top, we didn't realize that we still had about 15 kilometers to go back down and we didn't have a lunch with us, so we didn't eat anything except our breakfast and a few muffins we brought along. So I didn't take any pictures or video going down, I was just trying to get down as quickly as possible because at that point we were completely exhausted. So now let's go have a look inside of Lightroom. So we're first going to select the three shots that we have here, so if we open them, there's one that is supposed to be correctly exposed, one that's underexposed, and one that's overexposed. So now let's select the three shots. Right click here, go and photo merge, and select HDR merge. So now it might take a few seconds for it to merge together. I already did it before, so this one was really quick. Uh, so if we here we have a few settings, so the first one is auto align. You want to leave that pretty much all the time because they're going to do a really great job of taking the pictures even if you move between each shot. After that, I usually leave auto settings uh, on to make sure to uh, have a good base when I start editing the picture. And then we have our Digo settings. This can help to remove uh, things that move between the shot and only keep one of them. So here we also have an option to show the deghost amount. So if we click on it, there's gonna be red that's gonna appear and show where they did the correction on the picture. Usually you don't wanna go too high with the deghost uh, settings because if you go to the end, uh, a lot of noise is gonna come back inside of the picture. So you probably don't want that in the end. So we're gonna click merge and wait a few seconds for the picture to get merged. So now the picture is ready. It created a stack with all the pictures so we can go forward and unstack it to see all the pictures. So here we have our final shot and we have our three original shots right behind them. So if we open up here and look at this picture, we see it's way better. We have way more detail inside of the trees here. We also have the nice uh, highlights from the sky, so the blue from the sky. So we have all the information uh, from the shot. I already edited the shot, so I'm probably just gonna come here and paste my settings uh, on the picture. And we're gonna see right away the effects. So we have here a lot of information inside of the shadows, but also we're keeping the information in the highlights, and this is the beauty of an HDR picture.
Now, some people might say, if we look at the, pic uh, the settings here, I'm pushing the highlights and the shadows pretty hard. Um, so I could try doing the same thing on the original shot. So this was the one that was uh, well exposed. But the problem we're gonna see here, if we're not doing an HDR picture for something like that, and we really push the shadows to ex the extremes, is the noise that comes inside of the shot. So here we can clearly see there's a lot of noise in the shadows because there was not enough light uh, to allow to get the details inside of it. But if we come back to our HDR shot here, the details are way better. Um, we don't have any more or as much noise we had before, which is very acceptable as a final shot. Now let's move to the next shot. So for the next shot, I already put them together. And when you look at this one, if we copy the settings here and go to the next shot that also has the same settings pasted, uh, we're gonna see they look pretty similar at first. Um, so you might say, why would you take an HDR picture in this case? Like I said earlier in the video, it's actually really great for the highlights in the snow. So if we look at this shot, that is not the HDR shot, that's just a normal a single shot. And we look at the mountains here, we do have some detail inside of the uh, snow and around, but it's really overexposed overall. Now if we come here in this HDR shot, we see that we have way more detail inside of the snow. We can actually really see the details and the rocks coming out through the snow, and it's not completely overblown. So as you can see, you probably shouldn't be using uh, HDR for every single shot. I actually only take two to 5% of my shots using uh, HDR, and 95% of my other shots are using normal shots from the camera, and that's because the camera already has a really good high dynamic range, uh, but in some cases it can help, like for example, here inside of the trees, uh, we can really get the detail out uh, from the shadows and keep the highlights. But most of the time I would stick to just using a normal uh, picture, which is gonna do the job just fine in the end. If you like this video, please leave a comment below to let me know uh, what you would like me to cover in the ne next ones. I'm gonna be doing more and more photography related videos in the coming weeks. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends if you're into photography. See you in the next one.